Why does a chiller surge a lot when the load is low? Supply liquid temperature almost equal to return liquid temperature. This gets back to controlling our lift and how much the compressor can ramp. As we unload, we can only, our, uh, how much lift we can achieve with that impeller without surging also lowers. So when we've got a minimal load, we're down here, right? Our surge potential is right here. Like it's very, very low compared to if we were at uh, a full load with, we had to ramp the compressor to a higher speed, we could run up here all day, right? And we got lots of headroom to operate. But when we get down into the low, lower load state, that is not true. And our flow rate significantly reduces through the compressor, which pushes us against that, that surge boundary. There are some chillers, they can only unload so far. One of the things you can do to really help your chiller at a low load state beyond just all the basics, right? GPM, refrigerant charge, stuff like that, is getting your condenser water down. So a, we'll use a YK. A YK can run a condenser water of as low as 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Now a train CVH, you don't want to do that. You don't want to go below 70 degrees and even 70 can be pushing it, but you don't want to push past 70 degrees with a train CVH because you will run into oil uh, mitigation issues, and you'll start to lose. Uh, you'll start to lose your oil to the condenser and evaporator. You're not going to maintain proper return through your reductor system back into the uh, the oil sump. With a YK, though, they are designed to run at those lower condenser temperatures, which helps their overall efficiency, and that is necessary. So if you've got a situation where you're running really low load, but you're not, you're not lowering your condenser water set point to track with it, you need to lower your condenser water. So in most low load circumstances, we also have low ambience outside, unless you're doing process cooling or something, I don't know. But just in most circumstances, if we have a lower load, um, and especially if we're doing comfort cooling, then we've got a low ambient. If we have a low ambient, then we have the ability to, that, that cooling tower can, can cool that condenser water down significantly. And, but if we're still asking that tower to run, you know, let's say we're it's able to run with no fan, it's just passive uh, cooling through evaporation on open loop or something. And that alone is able to maintain in the 70s uh, in terms of entering water temperature. Well, that's still a really high condenser water for a YK. Now that's where we get specific to a YK. That's still a high condenser water. And this is true across the board with chillers, but I'm, I'm just getting real specific with the YK because they like cold water, as cold as you can give it to them on the condenser side. So even if you just got that tower fan to maintain, say, mid-60s, uh, I, I personally, I really like running my YKs in low ambient conditions at 65 degrees Fahrenheit entering condenser water. That's, that, that is my happy zone. If you can achieve that, then you can, you'll be able to get that lift down with that lower load and you'll put you'll give your chiller what it needs to be able to manage that reduced surge boundary by helping it drop down on the lift because right now to try to represent it on the chart what you're doing is you're running up here with a higher lift but you've got a really low flow versus if you're and by flow i mean how much how much refrigerant is going through the impeller. That's what the flow is referring to. It's refrigerant volume through the impeller. So we don't want to change how much flow we have through the impeller because we're maintaining set point, but we do want to get our lift down. So what we would end up doing is by lowering that condenser water, we can get that lift down. And now we're off of that surge boundary and the chiller's happy. But with higher condenser water, we're back up here to maintain uh, leaving water set point and we're just riding that surge line's ass. So uh, that would be my recommendation in that circumstance. If you're not already in Chiller Academy, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. Just think about it, right? 
Uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've, I've committed, I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow and help this industry take step, steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's what I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can, uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, you know, we're doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given. 